okay now first and foremost before we go in into uh, our sap hs module uh, i would just like to know what do you know about sap are you people basically from the core ehs domain or what is your interest why do you want to get into the sap hs uh, consultant role uh, if you could share me your thoughts as well what do you know about sap that would be uh, helpful to us as we move forward because i just want to know your core uh, background before we get into the real demo session okay anybody can start you can just share me your thoughts what do you know about sap what is sap basically and why do we use sap or if not you can tell me about your background maybe and why do you want to learn sap hs module because uh, i'm sure that is the reason why we are all here today because you are interested yeah this is rajan vemula mr nayar yes, rajan yeah i had uh, eh and s managerial experience in tennis in uh, united technologies corporation in overseas okay uh, i returned back to india last two years ago so okay. i am actually 50 plus so i am interested okay. to enter and see the sap eh and s position because we know usually okay. the system the management system and the regular management reporting and implementation auditing all those things but how uh, mm. sap as an erp will uh, help to customize mm. the eh and s reporting i want to learn mm. that's the reason why i joined okay. this okay so you were basically into the core domain of ehs yeah it was actually uh, 15 years ago i was in the core domain later yeah. i did my mba in singapore and i became a business manager so after working for 20 years so mm -hmm. i returned back now this is i think uh, my core competency okay. still uh, lies with qhsc quality ah, and okay quality. that's nice yeah yeah okay so now you want to learn about the it like you know we all work in uh, ehs domain yeah but somehow we were not directly related with uh, the it skills or maybe the technological part was missing yeah so now you want to explore the it skills related to it i think Actually, that is what i did uh, edp management mm -hmm. before i left to foreign in 1994 mm -hmm. now i completely mm -hmm. don't okay. have the grip on the it am i right mm -hmm. so i need some mentoring ship uh, how mm -hmm. to utilize this uh, sap customization okay okay right yeah that is nice uh, definitely uh, we'll go through the course i'll teach you what are the components that we have in sap hs how the customizations are done how exactly do we fulfill the requirements of the clients we are going to see all of those details may not be as deeply as you may learn while working as a consultant not to that extent but yes i would give you enough information so that you can be self sufficient you could uh, understand what happens in a project and how do you uh, customize the software as per the client requirement that is definitely one of the plus points when you take up this course yeah thanks rajan thanks anybody wants to share your uh, thoughts or maybe your requirements i can say or maybe uh why is it that you want to take up sap hs yes, sir this is shrinivas from vishakhapatnam sir yeah uh, actually i am working as a safety engineer from it yes sir huh. okay in construction in construction field okay actually i i am completed my btech in computer science sir okay uh, after that one of my friends suggested me to settle in safety field that's why i continued mm -hmm. in this field eh? now i want to convert my uh, oh, overall no. experience into uh, sir mm. that is the, that is why i want to this, okay. i think this is why this is the re related mm. module to my uh, work experience that's why i want to shift in this absolutely absolutely mm, sir yes sir yes. 
so basically i think you're a, a engineering graduate and that is why you're like more suitable since you have both experience in the four domain plus you have a engineering degree with you yes uh, sir yes sir. it is yeah. uh, very much suited for you uh, because yes, even sir, me sir. i am having a engineering background if i wanted i could have directly went into the it sector but i chose a different okay. field i went into ehs but okay you know after some years when you learn most of the things in the four ehs then you feel to get saturated Yes, Maybe yes. you will feel I know those things. Is there anything new which I want to learn? When you are yeah. thinking like that, maybe you want to explore the technological side. That is exactly yes. what I do. Yes, I yes, thought, yes. okay, now I know most of the things in the core domain. Let me try uh, the IT sector because, mind you, EHS professionals have very limited scope. I mean, yes, our area of work is very limited. Either you can become an auditor, either you can yes. become a EHS manager. Or yes, you can become a EHS inspector. Is there anything yes, else you can do with your experience? Yes, nothing. Yes, sir, nothing. I mean, nothing. basically, that's the dead end. You hit a dead end. Yeah. I am an internal auditor. I have done uh, these, uh, you know, internal auditing courses, uh, ISO fourteen thousand one, OSHA eighteen thousand one. I did everything. Nebosh ITC, blah blah, everything. Yes, sir, sir. I, okay, I, good, 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 sir, good, sir. Yeah. yeah. But okay. you know what happens. You know what is happening in our field. Lot of yes, guys, sir. I don't know how neighbors they are conducting the examinations. Anyone yes, can sir. just get into EHS profession, and you know they will come up to our level. Then things get uh, really tough for us to work. Yes, when sir. you have to deal with a boss who has very less logical reasoning mind, then ah. it's very difficult to manage. Yes, that yeah, is exactly yeah. that's the most important uh, point that we face as a yeah. EHS professional. Yeah, 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 sir. So I had that tussle. I had that uh, somehow. I felt you know, I have okay. hit a dead end. Maybe it is a right time for me to explore other opportunities. Sure, yes, sure, sure. Yes, IT industry pays very well. It hmm. pays very good salary package. So I thought, okay, let me try this. So that is how I got into the IT sector after a long, long time after completing my engineering. Okay, fine. Thank you so much for sharing your feedback. Sure, sure. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Anybody else want to share your thoughts, or at least do you know what is SAP? Why do we use SAP? Uh, because you know, uh, you know, you should know what what you are going to learn. You should know what are the pros and cons when you want to learn any new skill. Your friends will tell you this is good, that is good. Tomorrow they will say some other, or maybe Oracle software is good. So. You should like think for yourself. Okay, now I have so much experience in the core domain. Uh, I I am good at IT. Uh, let me try something new. So if you have such kind of a self suggestion, I think that will be more beneficial to you. Don't listen to anybody. People will tell you a lot of ideas. They will tell you a lot of things. Do this, do that. But what suits you? That is more important. It should be something. That enhances your skills, that complements your present experience. It complements your educational background. Do a, a course which will be, uh, you know, projecting you on a larger scale. It should something. It should be something that should propel you to high, newer heights, to gain newer skills, meet new people, explore wonderful opportunities which are somehow related to your experience. When you feel okay, this is what I am looking for. Then you are welcome to SAP HS. Okay, right. So I hope uh, maybe uh, that is all. I may get the feedback from you. Uh, we can just continue with our demonstration, right? So SAP, as most of you know, SAP is a ERP software. We use this SAP ERP software to manage our day-to-day -day activities, to manage our business processes in any industry. SAP EHS is such a versatile module that it can support any kind of industry. It can be a chemical industry, pharmaceutical sector, uh, civil and construction, infrastructure companies, services-based industries, or manufacturing sector, food processing industry. You take any industry. SAP EHS model has solution to all of these different sectors. You can select any of these components and you can implement which suits your individual needs. I mean, the individual needs of the company. 
and like i said erp is nothing but enterprise resource planning so it may be your core functions like finance and accounts or maybe hr functions or maybe sales and distribution administration roles these are all business processes okay that every company has to follow every company needs to have finance every company needs to have hr activities so instead of relying on physical efforts doing everything physically you can make use of this erp software i think somebody is not on mute can you please put yourself on I I cannot mute from here. Can somebody please mute uh, him because I don't know. Like somebody has unmuted. Yeah, yeah. I I mute her. Okay, okay. Thanks. That will be helpful. Okay, guys. Fine. So let's continue. So you know, if you have to, uh, if you want to utilize your resources more efficiently with the hundred percent utilization. it is it may be related to your hr functions or production or sales and marketing it can be any of these as long as you are using any kind of erp software not only sap there are many erp softwares already available in the market so when you utilize these softwares it will be more helpful for you to maximize uh, your uh, resource utilization and thereby you can reap the benefits in a very short time so it will help you to plan your activities plan your business processes and you can carry out or execute these activities in a very smooth manner that is why we rely heavily on sap erp software before pandemic the situation was altogether different in india you know we used to go to office we used to conduct all our businesses mostly physically there was no automation of any kind people uh, the companies uh, refrained from investing into the it uh, sector but now post pandemic we are seeing that the companies or the industry has realized if they do not invest into the in it infrastructure then another few lockdowns they may be wiped out almost 90% of the industry will be wiped out you know what is happening with the msmes most of the companies are shut down most of the companies are suffering heavy losses because of the lockdown restriction if just imagine if they had at least 50 to 60% of uh you know automation or if they had invested into the it infrastructure maybe they could have carried their business function sitting at home at least sales finance activities or accounts or uh, hr activities or administration activities at least these could have been done easily sitting at home but you know our most of our indian companies did not uh, realize this beforehand so they could not run their businesses as usual most of their business activities came to a standstill so now they are realizing they cannot make the same mistake again so they are implementing erp softwares in most of the sectors they know that they have to uh, utilize the technology of the present day if they want to survive in this competition otherwise it is very difficult for these companies so as a result you can see i don't know how many of you may have got the call lot of it companies are recruiting it professionals it not only ehs the entire uh, erp professionals you know they are on high demand for it and especially ehs let me tell you there are very few professionals who are available in the market because this is a very unique module very unique module especially the people who already worked in the core domain and having sap ehs module experience are very very few in the market so you will be getting lot of calls there are lot of opportunities for sap ehs professionals so i think if you have decided to shift your career this is the right time don't wait for another 2 years or maybe another 3 years by that time the market will get saturated right this is the time if you want to commit you learn sap hs module and then you can shift your career to a whole new domain okay so that's what i wanted to tell you and uh, what is a erp software i just introduced to sap erp now coming particularly to what is a sap hs module or what are the advantages of 
SAP EHS module. Let's see that. So basically your SAP EHS module is going to help the companies in, in uh, formulating policies, in uh, formulating the procedures, and to come up with these policies and procedures and to implement them at the ground level. So any SAP EHS management system, any EHS management system, you know, it starts with a commitment by the company. So if you are really committed towards zero harm, or if you are really committed towards the EHS, uh, achieving the goals of EHS, then, you know, definitely you need to have any ERP software, just like your SAP EHS. So this is really going to help companies in achieving their goals in EHS. So that's one of the main important points or advantages of relying on the technology. And secondly, it will help you to fulfill your social responsibility. As a corporate company, your corporate social responsibilities are not only towards people, they are not only towards society, but also towards the environment and health and safety of the employees. So that is why your SAP HS module is going to help you in implementing these policies, implementing the control measures that you want to see on the ground level. And uh, if you want to measure the KPIs of your EHS management system, that can be easily done by using SAP EHS module. Because once implementing EHS management system, don't think the, the goals will be achieved automatically. You have to constantly measure your performance. Maybe month on month basis, quarter on basis, you have to see how many incidents are being reported, how your overall EHS system is performing. That that kind of uh, that kind of reports can be generated in SAP EHS, which will give you an overall picture of how your EHS system is performing. So these are two things which are very outstanding if you are using SAP EHS model. Apart from this, yes, if you have to comply with a lot of regulations. Then, I'm very sorry, but see, I cannot concentrate if you do not mute yourself. Please mute because I cannot go with the flow. I'm very sorry, but I cannot concentrate if there are noises around. Yeah. Okay, fine. And uh, the most important point, what I would like to bring to your notice is that, you know, if you're using SAP EHS module, you can save a lot of time, especially if you want to generate uh, compliance reports, if you want to generate uh, the reports, which may you may have to submit to the government agencies. If you're not using a software like SAP EHS, let me tell you, you need to invest a lot of time in generating these reports. You may have to, spend a lot of time in gathering the data you have to spend a lot of time in correcting the errors in the data and then you have to design the report then load the data into the report and print the report all these things are going to take easily a lot of days maybe one week to 10 days but what happens in sap ehs module you know all the data will be present in the ehs module all you need to do is select which report you want to generate generate the report then you can submit this report either as a soft copy or you can just take a print and submit this to the government agencies. As simple as that. Hardly how much time. It will take half an hour maybe, max to max. So you can save a lot of time for generating your reports, managing the data, and to comply with the regulations. That's number one. Secondly, you need a fewer resources if you are using SAP HS module. You don't need one resource just for collecting data. You don't need one resource for uh, preparing this report. You don't need a separate resource for uh, you know, modifying the reports or uh, evaluating the reports. Just one resource would be sufficient and you can manage your overall compliance system. It is very simple and very easy. To use. Okay, so these are some of the overall advantages of using SAP EHS module. Now let us go point by point. Let us see what are the point-wise advantages of SAP EHS. Okay, so it helps you to reduce incidents, mitigate risk, and facilitate safe working environment. So what does it mean? How can it reduce incidents? It cannot reduce incident by itself. It is not a robot, robotic system. It is not some automation software. 
that it will help you to reduce incidence what it will do is it will show you the actual picture it will show you how many incidents are occurring in your company and you can concentrate on those areas which requires your uh, attention which requires your uh, additional control measures to be implemented so if you know overall out of all the incidents which are those incidents that are reported uh, with a large number you can concentrate on those work areas and you can improvise by maybe uh, changing your plan for that area or maybe by implementing the control measures additional control measures so that is what it means by reducing incidents and mitigating risk coming to the next point you know if you are working in a chemical industry uh, or any industry that is considered hazardous there are certain regulations related to the hazardous substances those hazardous substances you need to manage them uh, related to the quantity you cannot store them or you cannot manufacture hazardous products in whatever quantity you want there is always a limitation you need to follow those limits and you want to comply with the regulation related to hazardous substances that can be done by using sap hs module it will allow you to safely and securely handle the hazardous substances and also store those hazardous substances that is again a very important point we can continuously monitor incident patterns and devise improved risk management metrics so what does it mean you can continuously monitor incident patterns incident patterns means whether your incidents are near miss incidents whether your incidents are major incidents major accidents or what kind of nature does your incident have like if out of 500 incidents are there more number of near miss incidents if they are near miss in which particular work area is it having and you can individually concentrate on those incident uh, incidents and you can uh, plan out with additional control measures to reduce them hello sir so ji, can is, you sorry uh, to interrupt and can you please uh, hmm. uh, scroll down to slides i think so we are we are now no, uh, no reflecting second slide only i am in second slide by the second way second okay thanks yeah okay so yeah no problem so you can continuously monitor the incident patterns like i told you by uh, comparing the number of incidents maybe on a month on month basis and see to it whether they are reducing or whether whether they are increasing and you can take action to bring them down to the acceptable level that is what i mean by the third point and then continuing with legal safety and sustainability regulations there are many regulations you know if you are specially associated with chemical or pharma industry there are tons and tons of regulations you need to fulfill first and foremost in india itself if you are running if you are like you know manufacturing pharma or chemicals then you have to comply with so many regulations it may be related to hazardous waste it may be related to dangerous goods or hazardous substances or maybe occupational health and safety there are umpteen number of regulations so you know like if you have to manually handle all these regulations just imagine the team size that you need maybe i have seen some ehs teams consisting of even 15 people or 20 people and they are specialized into each of these regulations one person will be specialized in uh, hazardous waste another will be specialized in dangerous goods regulation another person will be taking care of hazardous regulations so just imagine you need a whole set of team lot of people to manage individual regulation but if you have sap ehs module you can plan out what are the requirements of each regulation and you can safely configure those requirements into the sap ehs system and as and when you need any report to be generated it can be easily generated because compliance all it comes down to is what kind of reports you are generating what is your ehs data saying about your company and you have to present these data to the government agencies that is what we do in compliance it can be done easily by using your sap ehs module and then finally yes you can proactively uh, identify what are the risk in your work areas identify the hazards and risk take measures to control them to either completely eliminate the hazards or maybe uh, put some additional control measures to control these hazards 
so it is not possible to identify these hazards if you are not proactive enough if you want to avoid any incident you have to proactively look out for new hazards which may present themselves in a company that can only be done when you are proactively seeking out what are the new hazards that are there in the company and then you need to uh, implement certain control measures to keep them under check so these are some of the individual point wise uh, advantages of using your sap hs module is it clear to you people is there any doubt any questions regarding this before we move on to individual components okay let's carry on fine so what are we actually going to learn in sap hs module i told you all the advantages i told you what is sap erp software now let's see what we find in sap hs module first and foremost we are going to see some general overview of ehs in your sap server how you can access the ehs components in the server and uh, how you can configure them what are transaction codes and some general information related to your ehs in sap overview okay we'll see that first then we go to basic data and tools which is the first component in sap ehs what is basic data and tools this is the component which is used to create and store ehs data like for instance if you want to create msds reports you need some chemical physical chemical properties you need to have information on uh, first aid measures you need to have information on fire fighting measures or legal requirements uh, applicable regulations this information you can create and you can store in basic data and tools so i can say that your entire ehs data will be residing in one way or the other in your basic data and how you can create you can create ehs data by using either specification management or phrase management these are the two tools which are available for us to create ehs data and we can store the data in this basic data not only that after you have created the data maybe you can generate reports related to them within this basic data and tool so we are going to learn three very important things in basic data and tools specification management phrase management and report management i cannot go into more detail what is a specification management and all because it takes lot of time just to understand the concept of specifications but just understand this in a very simple terms basic data and tools is a component which is used to create and store the ehs data okay next so the second component we come across is known as product safety product safety is a component which helps companies in following the regulations uh, specially related to hazardous substances so all in all product safety is related to hazardous substances how you can control these hazardous substances what are the limits that you need to maintain and uh, what kind of uh, reports we can generate for your hazardous products 90% of your entire product safety revolves around report management so we are going to see any report when you create for any hazardous product what are the different statuses that it will go through who has to authorize those reports if there are any errors how do you rectify those errors how do you create a report template a report template means basically it is a blank document blank document Uh, without any real time data that is your report template so for this purposes there are mainly uh, three to four components that are very important in product safety first is your report information system which contains all your released and historical reports related to the products then you have substance volume tracking which is a software which is like you know it's a program which is used to uh, which is used to find how much is your hazardous substance quantity the current hazardous substance quantity because like i told you there are hazardous substance regulation as per which you cannot store hazardous substances beyond a certain limit if the government agency tells you you can store only up to 100 kg of a hazardous substance that is the limit you cannot go beyond that and store 150 kg or 200 kg you have to constantly check what is your hazardous substance quantity and if there are a more number of hazardous substances it is physically not possible you cannot go every day and check 
how much is the quantity calculate compare it with the reference value it is very difficult so we have a program called substance volume tracking whose job is to check what is the present quantity of the hazardous substances and as and when they reach to the maximum limit it will generate alerts it will generate alert to the sap user so that they can take timely action to reduce the quantity so it is an automatic function one of the very important uh, components in our ehs called substance volume track it will track the substance volume and it will generate an alert so that it can take action then we go to wwi report template wherein it is nothing about designing your reports how do you want to generate the report what should be the design what data do you want to include in a report all this can be decided when you go to the wwi report template so where wwi stands for if you want you can maybe note down windows word processor integration wwi windows word processor integration it is a microsoft corporation software which has been designed specifically to be used with sap this is a software which will help you to edit your report template and if you want to design your report template even that can be achieved in wwi report template and finally we'll go to the global label management which is nothing but it deals mainly with the labels there are a lot of labels which you need to learn and depending on the business process there are a lot of labels which are used in companies danger labels address labels product labels primary container labels waste labels etc etc there are a lot of labels so in global level management we are going to learn how these labels are designed or how they are actually configured and uh, what are the different types of labels we have and in which business processes are we going to use the labels and how can we actually determine which label has to be printed uh, everything about the labels we are going to discuss in global level management right even this is a part of your product safety but during the course i'll be handling this separately point let's carry on to hazardous substance management this is a very small component we have in ehs module hazardous substance management it contains only two topics hazardous substance master and sara reports even this component is related with your hazardous substances basically a hazardous substance master contains all the basic information related to the hazardous substances like for instance the name of the hazardous substance what is the hazardous nature of the hazardous substance what are the physical chemical properties if you have to provide any first aid what are the first aid uh, instructions you need to follow like that there will be some basic information related to the all hazardous substances which you are using that will be present in your hazardous substance master similarly there is another very important concept called sara reports sara reports are those reports which you need to generate and submit to the american environment protection agency so for example let us say you are manufacturing okay somebody has put a message let me check before we continue i am actually scrolling down if you have message me now uh let me assure you we are into slide number i don't know like we are at hazardous substance management maybe there is a network issue maybe you are not able to see my slides okay just please check at your end but at my system i am at hazardous substance management sorry sir my network is you uh, know uh, good yeah. and uh, everything is fine but uh, hmm. initially onwards i am seeing for only second slide only i told you sir yes now we are uh, able to see six to six slides okay then maybe i will not allow i will not uh, uh, zoom it out let it be as it is if you can see my slide that is good enough now we able to see thank you yeah yeah okay fine do you do you want me to repeat from product safety again or is that fine with you can you please yeah yeah so product just safety show, like you just show me yeah, yeah yeah this is what we have four components in this 
report information system i explained to you substance volume tracking wwa report template we are going to learn and then we are going to study about the label management all these things are there in product safety right you can share the slide 3 and 4 as well you can scroll down okay. slide 3 and 4 i am uh, okay this is my slide number 2 this is my slide number 3 where i told you point wise uh, advantages of sap hs module then i went on to basic data and tools uh, i described what is the component all about why do we use it and uh, what are the three topics we have in this that's your basic data and tools and then currently we are at hazardous substance management right i told you about hazardous substance master and uh, i was actually explaining to you sara report so sara report is nothing but just say that you are manufacturing any hazardous product in india okay and you want to sell that product in united states so what you can do before you can sell that product in united states you have to first pre prepare a report called sara report where sara stand for us super fund amendments and reauthorization act it is an act passed by the us parliament uh, pertaining to you know environment protection yeah so this sara report basically you have to prepare every month and you need to submit this to the environment protection agency of united states so before they allow your products to be sold in us soil you have to fulfill their requirements they will assess what kind of hazardous product you are manufacturing whether they really need those products how much are they going to affect the environment and the people and then if it is within the uh, limit then yes they will allow your product to be sold in us soil but once you start this process you need to prepare sara reports on a month on month basis and you need to share these reports with them okay these are known as sara reports we are going to see sara reports and hazardous substance master in this section hazardous substance management next going ahead dangerous goods management before i tell you uh, about these uh, dangerous good management uh, you need to understand that dangerous goods are somehow related with your hazardous substance if you look at the uh, definition of both of these terminologies it is almost same dangerous goods hazardous substances both are same but what we do is when we put the hazardous substances into the transportation when we want to transport hazardous products you need to fulfill additional regulations called dangerous goods regulation so any hazardous substance like say for example fertilizers pesticides if you want to transport it to your customer or if you want to uh, send it to your distribution center what happens is you need to fulfill additional regulations called dangerous goods regulations not only that in this dangerous goods management component we are going to learn what are the transportation categories which are available to us how all we can transport our dangerous goods what are the internationally recognized dangerous goods regulations we have and uh, we'll learn about them in dangerous goods regulations there are two things one is there are national level regulations pertaining to one specific country or there are international regulations as well for example your iata you must have heard this is a very common uh, regulation iata is one of the regulations we have imdg is another regulation which is followed by each and every country it is applicable to each and every country so like that we have a few more international dg regulations we are going to study about them and then we'll go to dangerous good master record just like your hazardous substance we saw hazardous substance master record similarly even in your dangerous goods there is something known as dangerous goods master record which contains each and every minute detail about your dangerous good again if i have to tell you there are 16 tabs 16 pages or uh, there are a lot of information which you need to maintain under your dangerous good master data for example your uh, physical chemical nature of the dangerous good name of the dangerous good which is applicable regulation what uh, method of transportation you are going to use 
which is the packaging material you need to use and uh, what is the upper quantity limit lower quantity limit what are the certain special provisions you need to follow during the transportations and there are lot and lot of data that you need to maintain so we are going to discuss dangerous good master record as well when we go to dangerous good man and yes there are certain documents though these documents do not belong to ehs see dangerous goods documents are prepared by sales and distribution team though it is a part of ehs dangerous good is a part of ehs i completely agree but the related documents has to be prepared by the sales and distribution people but there are certain checks and balances we have to make sure from our end i'm going to tell you what are those checks that we need to make with respect to dangerous good documents because you cannot enter any wrong data or you know wrong information pertaining to dangerous goods once it goes to the authorities they are going to confiscate the entire uh, shipment and they may put heavy fines on the company so there are certain online checks that has to be performed we call it as dangerous good checks dangerous good checks so we'll see that as well in dangerous goods management and then going ahead with waste management we are going to learn what is the hazardous waste uh, disposal process we have we need to understand certain basic data concepts like uh, some basic terminolo terminologies related to waste management we are going to learn and under master data we are going to see uh, what are the functionalities that are available in our waste management for example we have entry document is there we have a uh, authority assign number is there or we have certain other functions which we can use in waste management so all these terminologies we are going to learn under master data and then we going to the disposal documents how a disposal document is created there are various disposal documents depending on country in germany there is a different disposal document in usa we call it as hazardous waste manifest in different countries there are different forms and different designs but basically the data remains same overall so we are going to see how to create these disposal documents what data we need to maintain and also very importantly we are going to learn how to create waste management business partners in our waste management we will learn how to create waste management business partners totally we have four roles in that waste generator waste disposer waste transporter and authority so what are these roles and how can we create our waste management business partners that will be covered in your waste management it is also coming under your regulatory requirements so starting with product safety whatever we have discussed up to now all these things actually come under regulatory requirements okay then going ahead we have a very elaborate and uh, having too many functions this is one of the most important components a very elaborate component in ehs we call it as industrial hygiene and safety in industrial hygiene and safety component you can perform your risk assessments you can perform incident accident reporting you can measure your agents or hazards in the workplace measuring agents means like for example if there is noise uh, you can take the measurement of noise as many measurement values as you want and you can store those values into your industrial hygiene and safety so we are going to learn how can you see measurement will be taken using the uh, using the device that is okay but how do you manage that data in your industrial hygiene and safety how do you individually create those measurement values we are going to see those things under measurement management it is also very important because these measurement values are to be used in your risk assessments or if you want to implement any control measures you have to take reference of these measurement values so measurement management is also very important similarly yeah just a thing an incident and accident management hmm. does sap gives any ehn this uh, technical tools for incident investigation uh, it is very basic to be frank with you it is very basic there will be a normally uh, like you know what you call there are tripod and all we used to do in physically when the incident happens yeah see there are a lot of investigation tools like for example we have fishbone analysis oh those are all uh, quality tools but in terms of hns usually oh. 
tripod i think i remember i went to course no in accident investigation also like uh, you know i learned this long back we use fishbone analysis even in that accident investigation okay. or, just, or any other even does root have, cause analysis the sap provide any such no tool? it it does not provide such an elaborate tool it is very simplistic in nature so uh -huh. what companies do is they will uh, they will enhance it they will make certain changes to suit their requirement like you told no there are other tools available for investigation yeah so if you are not satisfied with what sap has provided as a standard solution you may go for enhancement okay okay but they have given very simple tool according to me that is nothing it will be like you know very very simple you just have to select few options and then say this is our root cause no that i don't think will be appropriate if you are using it in a company okay thank you yeah fine so what else we learn in this work area management again work area management is important because any plant or company will be divided into a lot number of work area smaller your organizational units smaller organizational units we divide the entire plant into these uh, particular units so that we can identify all the hazards that are available in each work area and you can implement the control measures effectively so work area management is very important though it is very simple but see what happens if the entire plant if you take into consideration there may be so many hazards you may miss and control measures will be all connected together in different directions so you cannot concentrate on the overall solution but instead of that when you break down your plant into small small organizational units what happens is we can give your full concentration on that particular unit then once the solution is given you can move on to the other work area and you can like that com complete all the work areas which you have divided so work area management is again very important so we are going to learn that along with that we are also going to learn exposure management and just the level yeah huh. when you are dividing the work area if you take a lot of work departments will be there functional mm -hmm. areas yeah so do you when you customize uh, you have to customize personally in each and every work area am i right the reporting system absolutely yes okay 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 no these customizations are not to the reporting level see here what happens is let's say you divide your plant into 10 work areas yeah so each work area will have its own characteristics will have its own hazards definitely yeah and you have to con uh, implement control measures which suits that particular work area but usually the risk assessment and all their mm -hmm. their work area related documentation what is under industrial hygiene so mm -hmm. and every area also you will have one ah and the sky or only one corporate guy will uh, gather all the information when you customize the ah and s sap see as a end user they may use a uh, Uh, any number of people it is their wish i mean the client may utilize any number of resources okay but, but if we learn this course hmm. what will be our uh, role actually in uh, under the custom in customizing the ah and s yeah so you will take the requirement from the client maybe the client will tell you look i want to create a number of work areas hmm. and uh, i want so and so uh, control measures to be available they will give you their requirement okay. okay and under spro you have to configure because let me tell you an end user cannot use spro they cannot do configuration and all configuration yep. is nothing but it is the settings you make to the uh, software yeah definitely i understood but uh, as a course participant once we yeah. complete hmm. what is the skill level and the, what will be our role hmm. that's what i want to know see you will learn Uh, some of the concepts as a end user and some of the concepts as a consultant i cannot teach you only from the consultant perspective uh, what will happen is you will miss out certain very key important uh, points under uh, end user role basically the navigation and customization is the main thing i think uh, we, we need to have to grab from you absolutely the How customization we... is again important but it is not everything especially if you are learning this code for the first time uh -huh. you also need to know what are the transaction codes you are using how can you create a data like for instance if you want to create a accident report what is the transaction code used what are the screen functions available i have to teach you first that as a end user 
but usually uh, but usually when we attend online courses maybe some of it's just it's okay for them but uh, still we prefer a certain physical attachment uh, for one or two days during this course to customize and help us in the lab you know like uh, practicals uh, yeah see uh, lab in the sense what happens in your sap yeah. i can take you through spro that is one of the configuration transaction codes and i can show you what are the customizations that are possible under each component but usually once we listen we forget you know can you give us videos is it possible to get videos to now practice? now it is not possible at this point of time but uh, maybe i can i can help you out no problem with that uh, but at this point of time i cannot take you through that not now but once if we join the course will we sure, get sure. Uh, videos or not videos like what videos you want daily class uh, practice sessions ha uh, that you will get <laughs> see whatever the uh, like course we do whatever mm. the classes we take up those videos will be given to you on the same day following day am i right yeah yeah same or uh, it, you may get on the same or most probably by the next day you will be get okay okay yeah but it will be valid until what period duration ah uh, uh, maybe it is valid for one year One you year. can access those videos for one year, or if you want, maybe you can even download them. I believe. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Fine. Thanks. So, uh, this is what I was uh, telling you. I think uh, I covered most of the points in industrial hygiene and safety. Exposure management is the level of exposure your employees are exposed to the hazards. So we can give the exposure rating to this. we can assign the rating depending on what is the exposure level to the hazards and we can manage these exposure levels that we see in the exposure management so this is overall this is what we have in industrial hygiene and safety and there are many other functions which i have not listed out so it's a very vast component like i told you there are many other functions which you can then going to our last component occupational health occupational health component mainly deals with the health of your employees so what we are going to see here you can uh, maintain the medical records of all the employees either during the pre employment medical checkup process regular medical checkups or after post employment medical checkup you can maintain all the medical records of your each employee in your occupational health component that is first thing secondly we can plan which are the medical checkups each employee has to go through depending on the nature of work he is performing because a person who is driving forklift will not be going through the same medical checkup what a person doing uh, you know uh, the chemical handling will be undergoing both people are performing different activities so the medical checkups will also be different so in occupational health you can decide which employee has to go undergo which kind of medical checkup even that level of configuration is possible so we do that by creating the medical service and by assigning something known as health surveillance protocol so we are going to learn those things and once that is done uh, if you have completed one year in the company now you are due for the medical checkup i can take up an appointment i can fix an appointment for your medical checkup and uh, i can uh, create a i can create a invitation letter and i can share it with the employee so first i can fix an appointment create a invitation letter and then share it with the employee containing on which date he has to go for medical check up which is the medical center at what time he has to report all these details will be contained in the invitation letter not only that if you want to maintain vaccination drive details like if you want to maintain the vaccination details of all the employees we have a separate section where you can maintain these details as well but overall if i have to tell you each and every medical uh, report or medical condition of employees can be maintained in occupational not only that we can even report injuries and illnesses which normally occur in a company on a day to day basis injury illness reporting also possible under occupational health yeah and you can maintain the complete medical details of every employee in the occupational so it does not go outside of health whatever we do in occupational health it is all related to the health of the employees so this is a very unique component and a very important component especially from hr perspective because this component will be heavily used by hr department 
okay so these are some of the important components we have in ehs module i hope i was clear enough to give you the guidance on what we are going to learn in each of these components and finally i will also be teaching you some of the technical concepts like what are tables what are integration points available and uh, certain other details as well so we'll see majorly the functional details of ehs module combined with some technical concepts as well okay so this is what we have in your uh, sap ehs module now if there are any questions or any doubts comments observations you can please share it to me sir hmm sir yes 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 so can i can i ask the question sir yeah please go on sir i just want to know uh, hmm. once we have taken the course and uh, in the meantime or even at the ending of the course hmm. so can you design any course work which will be similar to a real office work so that uh, we can have a better understanding of uh, what is actually done in a company can you okay. do something like that uh, i can help you with that, that. means a real time project yes sir yes sir. Sir. something like real time project yes sir see uh, real, I mean, real time, time project sir yeah. see i don't know like uh, if there are any consultants who share with, with you the real time project information but let me tell you when you are working as a consultant it will be highly confidential and you cannot reveal any information pertaining to the project on which you are working so real time project i don't understand what is the meaning if you are designing some electronic device if you are uh, uh, creating any new software okay i can say fine we can be involved but these kind of projects do you know how much time it takes for implementing a sap project mm, no sir no idea 8 months to 15 months ideally oh. okay sir and we are how, how many hours we are going to connect maybe 30 hours 40 hours okay sir <laughs> so you can imagine this is like a, a tremendous kind of uh, information that you have to undergo okay so uh, what i meant to ask is I, so uh, yeah i understood we... see because yes. you should have some idea working as a consultant what you would be doing as a consultant is it only like uh, you know going into the software and doing the configuration let me tell you people give so much importance to configuration it is hardly hmm. done within a week or 10 days that's all it is remaining okay. all is preparing documents as these documents are prepared to be documents are prepared blueprint documents are prepared you need to have so many discussions with the client gather their requirements uh, you know have meetings with other uh, sap consultants understand where will be the integration points testing the software is another phase like you know it like i told you it is implementation project takes around 8 to 15 months okay sir but i, I can, can definitely guide that, you yeah uh, yeah go on but the thing is uh, after completing this course uh, suppose if we have gone to an interview hmm. they'll ask uh, they'll maybe they sh- they'll ask us to uh, hmm. they'll give us a task and ask us to implement that uh, at hmm. that time we should be knowing something uh, like uh, can yeah, we okay. Uh, that's what i meant to ask you uh, yeah, yeah, will we yeah, get yeah. the understanding just mm-hmm. by taking the course or mm-hmm. do we need any special uh, uh, projects that are uh, needed to crack mm-hmm. the interview i okay. wanted to ask that see mainly in the interviews they will be asking you regarding the sap hs module especially if you tell them that you are a fresher they are not going to ask you from the real time scenarios because they know how it happens when you start working as a consultant first and foremost they will send you for uh, the training they will mm-hmm. introduce you to the client if it is a implementation project you have to understand the business process of the client gather the requirement gathering the requirement means understanding what is that the client is expecting from this module what solutions are they expecting you have to take the requirements see if those solutions are available in ehs or not if they are not available maybe you have to go for enhancements you have to modify some of the parts in software and then you have to prepare as is documents okay Get, share those as is documents with the client to show that is this the actual process whether they are following or not 
if they say mm. yes this is the what we are following then you have to translate that as is document into to be document which means the current business process is this as it is now under sap this will be the solution so one is your requirement other document will be the solution then you go on with the blueprinting phase where you will combine all the solution with the requirement and then create the flow charts all that is done on the document uh, basis okay okay and they will share those document it's not that they will just uh, you know give you the laptop and say fine create a document as is document that is not okay. going to happen okay sir uh, will we get access to sap ehs uh, software yeah definitely then how do you practice okay okay sir so yeah. after the course how many days will it be active that you need to check with the training coordinator okay sir hmm. okay so while practicing can we make uh, as many experiments as we can or is there any limitation to that no no you can see i don't know like uh, whether you have the idea about uh, ehs software or erp software it's mm -hmm. it's not like you can experiment with this you are not coding here mind you okay. this is not a coding language okay. but you can create a number of reports you can create a number of uh, data which is uh, used in sap ehs module that you can create as much as you want you can spend as okay. much time as you want on the software no problem with that okay sir and just okay. like your tally like you know how they use software in the banking system right. you know it's just entering the information that's it entering the information hello sir yeah yeah yeah, yeah. please tell me sir there will be no coding in this module sir No, no. There is no coding. There, there will be no coding module. Hmm, sorry. Okay. This is a functional module, basically. Okay. Okay. This does okay, not okay, involve sir. any coding. Only technical knowledge. Okay. What you need to have is related to your configuration part. How do you configure the? Sure, software? sure. That is all you need. Coding is taken care by the base okay. basis. Sorry, your uh, ABAP team. You have ABAP programmers. They will take care of these requirements. Okay, sir, is 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 easy to learn, sir. <laughs> it is easy to learn, but don't take it too lightly. Yeah. Also, you have to study material. You have to practice on the system. How much you practice, sure, sure. how much you learn. Because people think it is okay, very easy, just like how we do our EHS job. Yeah. No, it takes time to learn any new skill. If you want yeah, to learn yeah. new <laughs> skill, it takes time, right? You have to put some effort. Okay. Yeah. yeah 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 yes sir. yeah yeah sir that just okay. like that it thank you thank you sir yeah ha uh, yeah, okay sir i i want to some guide 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 sir yeah uh actually i completed my btech in computer science sir and after yeah. that i'm having 8 years of uh, ehs experience as a yeah. Yeah. you told me yes yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it is the right time to me to uh, shift my career in this uh, sap ehs module sir it is the right time looking at the market conditions yes this is the right yeah. time yeah okay sir okay and then. also since you have a computer science uh, degree yeah. with you and also yeah. ehs domain experience so that should be more convenient for you to move okay. to it okay sure sir sir I, will there any provide any placements after completing the course sir uh that i don't know maybe you have to contact the training coordinator sure. because i'm okay, a, i'm a i'm a trainer that's all i'm a okay. part time okay. trainer yeah. okay okay sorry then thank you sir no problem no problem okay uh, sir do you know anyone who after completing this uh, course uh, got hmm. a job <laughs> in this field so you want to be 100% sure yes, you are sir. testing the waters right Uh, yes sir see sometimes you cannot be so sure also regarding your future okay <laughs> what if everything goes right if the recession starts yes sir <laughs> so don't see don't take any decision based on fears be confident okay. you know mm -hmm. there are opportunities right now market is good there are recruitments going on especially in tcs in uh, yes technologies there are a lot of My students are there. Lot of them have got placed here. Yeah. 
Yes sir, yes sir. If you see in Naukri, most of the SAPHS consultant ah. notifications are we are getting so many sir. Absolutely. Sometimes you will get direct uh, yeah. calls from the mm. companies asking you whether you want to join. Yeah. So, sir, I was, uh, I was thinking this module will be used by industries mm. which use heavy machinery and chemicals and also Absolutely. hazardous substances. Uh, you all said, you just now said that mm. uh, in TCS, Hmm. How is TCS using SAP EHS software, sir? No, 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 no. They are not using it. They are service providers. You ah. work for TCS, their client will be a Reliance Industries or Atani or okay, okay. Uh, BHE. LNT. LNT. Okay. LNT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it can be any other, for example, Biocon maybe or any other pharma. They are their clients. See, TCS is not going to use this software. They are going to oh. implement this software for those industries. Oh, okay, sir. So I know you are thinking IT industry is only coding, programming, uh, creating yes, software. Sir. No, right now the situation has changed. Software oh. is applicable equally even in your hospitals as it is applicable in any other uh, industry. So oh. TCS will be implementing the software for their clients. Okay, sir. Yeah. yeah. So they may be having a lot of uh, projects, I think so, because they are uh, recruiting a lot of EHS consultants, TCS specialists. Okay, and their so. clients may be from pharma space or from chemi chemicals, oil and gas. EH, SAP EHS is used in like, it is having solution for all the industries. Even civil and construction can use SAP EHS. So you can just imagine what has a civic, uh, civil construction to do with software. You can still oh. use it. For your occupational mm. health, industrial hygiene, and safety, you can use it. Okay, sir. There are people who got placed, even uh, now they are getting placed. Just a few days back, another person got placed. I mean, there are opportunities. I mean, I don't want to oh. boast anything about it. You can okay. just, you, but you have to be confident if you are going to learn anything. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Mm. Hello, sir. Uh, this no. is Singh, sir. Yes, yeah, Singh. Tell me. So, we experience in HA. Okay. Experience. Yeah. Tell me, sir. So, I want to shift to the means, uh, SAP EHS uh, mm -hmm. um, part. Mm -hmm. And uh, from one year, uh, we are working in SPARA, sir. So, it is, uh, it is uh, correlated with the uh, SAP, SPARA, or the, the uh, SAP is different and the SPARA is different, sir? No, the companies are different. There are many. Even your Oracle has, uh, you know, the solution for uh, these modules. And, okay. uh, you know, Enablon. Enablon is also a very famous uh, software, which is used for your EHS, EHS data management. It will be working on same lines. The concept is same, but see, SAP is uh, very good in terms of data security. You will get real-time data from other modules also, like from plan maintenance, from materials management, from finance, from sales and distribution. SAP has more than 100 functional modules. But I don't know any other software which is which can provide more than 100 functional modules. I don't think so there is any other. Because SAP is the number one company in ERP software business. After SAP comes your Oracle, then Microsoft and all. SAP is the number one market leader in ERP software. So if you compare this with SPARA and all, maybe they are standalone modules, but nothing as uh, good as SAP HS. No, because so Enablon is also the... a good software, you know. Enablon yes. is also good software. But if you compare it with SAP, it is nothing. Oh, sure. hmm. Sir, as a HSE professional, what will be the job? Profile as a EHS consultant. We are only for oh. the HSC consultant part, or we have to be I mean customization also, sir. Customization in the sense, yes, as per the requirement, see what you do first as a EHS consultant, you will go and meet. Let's take example of Reliance. There will okay. be a head of safety in Reliance. Okay, there will be a team of EHS professionals in Reliance. You have to go to them, meet them. See how they are implementing their uh, EHS system in uh, Reliance. Learn their process. Okay, document everything in a notebook or in your diary. Come back, create as is document. Then share the document with the client, with the head of safety. 
and ask him sir is this how you are uh, running your ehs system if he says yes exactly this is our business process then what you should do find a solution equivalent solution in your sap software okay so it involves a lot of things you have to go and meet the client you have to discuss with them you have to understand what solution they want from ehs then you have to provide a solution in sap software but that is what you do as a consultant don't so, think so oh, you will be doing be... what you are doing now okay sir so for that uh, we have to bash in customizations and other uh, things uh, the, the sap have if you have the idea what are the components it contains so it yes. will be clearly delivered yes yes absolutely that is what i will teach you okay see for example if we go to waste management you will learn what uh, options we have what functions we have in waste management how can you create the business partners what is the disposal document that they can use all that we are going to learn each one by one in uh, these functions no. thank you sir yeah any other doubts any other questions i'll be happy to answer your queries in training time also we uh, can access to the customized part means we can go to the each part in step what are the see, specifications are there yeah i know you have too many doubts too much confusion i can see that clearly but yes, remember sir. one thing sap ehs module is something that uh, requires years of uh, exposure okay uh, you see you cannot learn anything uh, within 30 days or within 2 uh, months no it takes time to learn yeah i can take you through the important configuration points but see again configuration depends on real time data that is given by the customer that is given by the client their requirement it will vary from one client to another client they will give us the requirement as per their requirement we will do the configuration what i do configuration for one company may not be applicable for the other company see that is how it is don't think if i just show you the configuration same thing is applicable for all the customers no that is not how it is see for a civil construction company configuration will be different as compared with a chemical or pharma company because their requirement will be different they want as per their requirement they want a solution that suits their requirement okay sir yeah yeah see it takes time to learn anything that is all i can say any other doubts any other question let me know or we'll uh, wind up Uh, no sir thank you thank you so much for answering sir yeah 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 not an issue my pleasure okay sir yeah okay guys then i think it's time uh, thank you for attending this demo session it was nice speaking to you guys to clarify your doubts thank you, thank and uh, presenting you this material i hope i was uh, uh, so efficient enough to give you as much knowledge as possible in this demo session yeah. which will thank help you, you to take a decision Thank you take care bye thank you thank you, thank you.